happy first Dublin Day, official first Dublin Day. We're going to see, so today's Bloomsday. Yes. Bloomsday is a fun little event they do once a year. Yeah, I don't really know what to expect. We don't either, we just know, we both tried to read Ulysses. It was... Me being a, like, teacher and him being a literature nerd, we couldn't figure it out. It was... Ding Dong Engineer over here couldn't yeah. figure it out. College Talk graduates. About reading Ulysses. <laughs> oh, it sucks, don't worry. <laughs> I read the critical essays. <laughs> we all got about 50 pages in and said this is about the worst book no, I've ever read in my life. Not so. worse, just like maybe though. I can't understand, so it makes you mad, so you're like, yeah. So, anyway, so everybody else is like, oh my god, it's the greatest novel that's ever been written. I'm like, have you read Harry Potter? Read yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all college professors that are like, it's the greatest ever. I don't know why I'm doing the Dr. Evil. Anyway, um, that so that's where we're going to go. Where, uh, they, they started at like 8 o'clock in the morning, and now we're going uh, to meet them around like noon. See, uh, see what's going on, but it follows this, the main characters, Leopold, uh, Bloom, Leopold Bloom. Yeah, uh, follows around his daily. Not Stephen Dedalus. Dedalus. Anyway. That was anyway. his code word for us to get out of the way when he was going to propose. Wasn't it Dedalus yeah. or Dedalus? How do you pronounce it? Uh, anyway, so we're going to go meet up the Bloomsdayers. <laughs> After spending the first part of our trip traveling along the western coast of Ireland, we finally made it to Dublin. We only have a few days in this bustling city, so we're hitting the major hotspots, including the Temple Bar Nightlife District, the famous Trinity College, home of the Book of Kells, and of course, the Guinness Storehouse. Dublin is a big little city. It's full of things to do and see, but you can practically walk its entirety in just a few hours. Dublin is a fun place to be, and the history of this town is fascinating, tragic, and triumphant. happened to be in Dublin on June 16th, known as Bloomsday, after Leopold Bloom from James Joyce's famous novel, Ulysses. Ulysses takes place in Dublin over the course of one day, June 16th, 1904. Fans dress in period costumes and stand on streets, reading nonsense from Joyce's grammar-defying novel. Oh, yeah. So here's Davy Burns, where it was an actual place that um, they visit in the book, and you can see all the hats to represent it. Bloomsday is weird and awesome, and I love it. It's crazy. Boss, I am in two minds not to give that fella in charge to obstruct the thoroughfare with his brooms and his lovers. What are you doing around those parts, Joe? Ah, uh, devil a much, says I. There was a bloody Trinity College is one of the most recognizable and important sites in Dublin. The campus is free to enter and you can walk around on your own, but in order to truly understand the significance of this place, I highly recommend taking advantage of the student-led tours. Tours depart from the College Green area and last 30 to 40 minutes. Trinity was founded in 1592 by Queen Elizabeth I for Protestant male students. The school was only open to Protestants until 1793, when admission to Catholics was finally allowed. However, the Catholic Church forbade enrollment. Before 1970, any Catholic that enrolled at Trinity would be excommunicated. The biggest crowd draw at Trinity College is the Book of Kells, an ancient text that was handcrafted by monks around 800 AD, located in this building. Unfortunately, no cameras are allowed inside, so you'll have to make the trip if you want to see it yourself. The Long Room, which is the main chamber of the old library, is over 200 feet in length and contains over 200,000 of the library's oldest books, Easily one of the world's most impressive libraries, it has served as the inspiration for libraries and famous movies such as Star Wars and Harry Potter. The Long Room is also home to other treasures, including this harp, 
a famous symbol of Ireland which is found on the Irish Euro and on every bottle of Guinness. This document is one of only a handful of remaining copies of the 1916 Proclamation of the Irish Republic, which is read on April 24, 1916, outside the General Post Office by Patrick Hearse, and set into motion the Easter Rising. After a long, intellectual afternoon, give your tired mind a break and head to St. Stephen's Green, a nature oasis in the bustling city. Enjoy a picnic, or simply sit, relax, and watch life go by for a short time. Say hello, everybody. We went back to about 30, took a 30. Now we are on our way to the O'Connell Street Bridge to begin our self-guided historical walking tour of downtown Dublin. How are you doing it? You got your Nerds! book what? and you took pictures of the pages. Yeah, because I didn't want to carry the book around. Well, you did want to carry the book around. Oh, yeah, and then... And then <laughs> yeah. Tonight, we are taking a self-guided tour of O'Connell Street a main thoroughfare in the heart of the city. This relatively short stretch of road has had more than its fair share of major historical events that have irrevocably shaped the course of Dublin's past and present. This, for instance, is the General Post Office, the site where the fight for Irish independence began in 1916. To this day, bullet holes can still be found in the building's columns. This landmark, on the other hand, known as the Spire, has no historical significance and is dedicated to nothing. It is simply a 120 meter high shiny pole. And speaking of inauthentic, we did our uh, McDonald's trip, because in every country we have to try McDonald's. A little bit different everywhere. A little bit different, a little bit different. What, is the, what, what did we get? They were called the Mc, McCrunchy? McCruncher. McCruncher, and they had like onion straws on them, or onion uh, things on. Emily, now that I saw you take a giant bite, why don't you tell us what you got? <laughs> we'll wait. It's like a chicken, uh, the garlic mayo chicken wrap. Good. I think they make them in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jessica, you said the chicken nuggets taste a little bit different? They do, and the sweet and sour taste. Oh, those. <laughs> It's early yet. It's like 9.30. Well, but it's Bloomsday. I wonder if people are just going to oh, That's true. Anyway, um, we got, I just got chicken McDonald's, but um, you said we got a curly different? fries, and they are not as good as Arby's. Yeah, everything's just a little, even yeah. the ketchup's a little different. Spicy nacho cheese wedges. Those Delicious. are really good. It's like McDonald's. Yeah, these curly Taco fries. Mm. Yeah, these curly fries, they're all right. They're not, mm. yeah, not great. Yeah, they're not great. But, oh yeah, what were these? The, the taste of it's like Mississippi, taste Mississippi caramel pie. Yeah, Things all I've the billboards. Had. Yeah, say <laughs> really good. The taste of America. We're at a bar. It's, a, it's actually a brewery uh, called uh, J.R. Sweeney's. Is that what it's called? J.W. Sweetman. J.W. Sweetman. What's it's like a, your mom translator. It's like we were at J.R. McSweeney's. No, not it's J. J.W. Sweetman's. So I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we all got a couple different things here. The girls, of course, got Chardonnay, and Ben and I got a different beer. But it's cool because we're literally right along the River Liffey. But what's funny is we can see uh, what was it called? The the the, 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 the spire? Yeah, we'll call it that. Something like that. Some we we'll, we'll have to look it up. But look. So you see that up there, that tall spire back there in the back? We're laughing because we did a historical walking tour a little bit ago, and it said we were like, "Oh, what is that? That's pretty cool." And it said it's a it's dedicated to nothing and has no meaning. So it's just a giant, but 380 some foot tall stainless steel rod that means nothing. It costs five million euros. So that's pretty funny. Tonight, we're back in the Temple Bar District, but this time we're joined by some friends from back home. Hey, look who we found! Hello. This is Ben's sister, Betsy. Hola. And her friend, Nathan. Boyfriend, friend, friend. Boyfriend. Boyfriend, Nathan. Ooh la la. 
They live in Madrid, and so they flew to Dublin just to see us bozos. What more of these people are? And we're about to go to Temple Bar and do a Baby Guinness. It's gonna be nuts. I don't even know what a Baby Guinness is. But anyway, so they're here. We're in the Temple Bar district. We're having a good time. We're about to take a shot, and this is going to be bad news, but here we go. Alright, we're all about to take this baby Guinness shot. Dublin is a very walkable city, and I highly recommend taking a walking tour. A good walking tour will help solidify the city in your mind and orient you as to where everything is and how the streets are laid out. It's also a great way to learn some of the history of the city, which will help you understand Dublin as a whole. You may also see places that maybe weren't on your original itinerary, such as this city market or this building, City Hall. Good tour guides give you the lay of the land, as well as the history behind the bricks. Halfway through our tour right now, we're stopped at Dublin Castle. What have you guys thought of the tour so far? It's pretty cool. Yeah, learning a lot, doing? seeing places we didn't even know we're here. Yeah. yeah, we're doing Pat Liddy's tour, which uh, a lot of uh, guidebooks recommended, and so far this guy's great. We've just finished another giant Irish lunch. We were pretty hungry though. Every, yeah, I was hungry, but man, every, every meal is very heavy here, so keep that in mind. Well, and of course we could have chosen something Yeah, longer, Yeah, I, I could have gotten a salad, I guess, but... The bangers and mash looked so good. They were good. They were good. But so, yes. We're headed to the Guinness factory now. Yeah, the Guinness storehouse. Um, we're doing the tour, and then I think they take you up to the, the what do they call it, the sky bar at the top at the end. Yeah. And I've heard that that part's amazing. The whole tour is good, but I've heard like that's so cool. So, cannot wait. Walking up towards the storehouse, I'm so excited to take this tour. This is really high on my list. Like one of the things I was. Oh yeah, like number one and two. <laughs> one and I mean, two. Top, top two. I'm losing it. So sorry. <laughs> The Guinness Storehouse is a high priority on the list of many a Dublin visitor. The current building, built in 2000, is shaped like a glass and is referred to as the world's largest pint. Guinness has been brewed at the St. James Gate Brewery on this site since 1759, when Arthur Guinness signed a 9,000-year lease with the city of Dublin, the very least that can be found in the floor of the main lobby. The Guinness Storehouse is a veritable museum of Guinness consisting of seven floors dedicated to the delicious brew. You'll get an overview of its basic ingredients, yeast, hops, and of course, water. You'll also learn about some of the history of the brewery through movies, pictures, and other exhibits. As you slowly make your way to the top, You'll see some areas dedicated to some of the more famous, if somewhat odd, advertising campaigns of the past, as well as restaurants and bars.
At the top of the pint sits the Sky Bar, reason enough for making the trip to the Guinness Storehouse. Bartenders masterfully pour the black gold into pint glasses, and each person gets one included in their admission. While the exhibits are interesting, it's worth coming to the Guinness Storehouse for nothing more than enjoying a pint with this bird's eye view of the city. Get a storehouse. What are our thoughts? I'm glad we did it. I am too. Kind of medium. The Guinness. Kinda, we were all kind of medium on it. Yeah. It's. Uh, I. I think the personally the sky bar up at the top. That was cool. Going up there and getting a pint and looking out over everything. That, that was, was cool. That was the only. Other than that. Yeah. Made it. <laughs> Meh. Hey, they have great water though. They That's have right. great, water. great water. Great water. High quality bar. High quality. <laughs> 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 Nothing but the best. Yeah, but other than that. You could probably do it. Yeah. It would be darn near the same as seeing it there. Pretty much, yeah. So come here, do it, you know, go through the little exhibits. Don't spend too much time on it because it's meh. But go to the top and get a pint in the sky bar. That was pretty neat. We are going to the Brazen Head, which is the oldest pub in Ireland. And a bunch of you guys recommend it. How cool is that? vacation is coming to a close. We're on our way to the airport now, going to Barcelona next. So excited about Barcelona. To, yeah, we're flying into Barcelona and then we're going to a town further south where a friend of ours lives. And then uh, heading back awesome. to Barcelona and flying home. It's going to be awesome! <laughs>